streaming. Where'd the iPad go? This is charging. This is charging. I need music. Oh, you need music. That pad was playing right now. We have an MP. Still need to see stuff. What's up? We need to create a new project. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome to the Comedy Store. <laughs> my name is Pat Reagan, and this is my mom's favorite song. She stood in the doorway, wearing pants and a shirt. And another shirt on top of her first shirt. She said, I'm not even sure you know what you really want. So well, let me explain. I just want a girl to let me let my mama. I just want a girl without any drama. I just want a girl to let me let my mama. I just want a girl without any drama. She also once told me that Mount Rushmore occurred naturally. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
This is the type of person we're dealing with. <laughs> this next song is, is this song is song. This next song is called Hard Boiled Egg. It goes like this. So guys, so I'm doing, I'm the uh, warm-up comedian for the Kill Tony podcast. Give it up for Kill Tony. Uh, can you turn on my mic a little bit more or can you just be back? Can you just be back? I don't know, I just feel like it's competing with the, with the guitar. Here's another song that goes like this. It's time for the pop, ragged shot. It's the kill. It's the cash slash kid. It's the kill. Tony shot. No, it's time for the pop, ragged shot. It's the pat, drag and shot. It's a 24 hour show. It's out of my head. It's fucking top of the pat, drag and shot. It's the pat, drag and shot. It's a 24 hour show inside of my head. So fucking welcome to the show. Will I want to send you real to take me on a train through dark abandoned tunnels into the sun again? Yes, I want a senorita to take me on a train through dark abandoned tunnels into the sun again? Yes, I want a senorita to take me on a train through dark abandoned tunnels into the sun again? Yes, I want a senorita to take me on a train through dark abandoned tunnels into the sun again? Into the sun again? And I want a margarita to paralyze my brain, rip off my frontal cortex and put it back again. Yes, I want a margarita to paralyze my brain, rip off my frontal cortex and put it back again. Yeah, 
senorita to take me on a train as I want a senorita to take me on a train I want a senorita to take me on a train said I want a senorita to take me on a train I want a senorita to take me on a train as I want a senorita to take me on a train I want a senorita to take me on a train as I want a senorita to take me on a train I want a senorita to take me on a train as I want a senorita to take me on a train I want a senorita to take me on a train take me on a train Morgan, take me on a train. It goes one, two, three. Then we jump in the water. It's just you and And these oceans of blue that surround us, this blue that surrounds us now. I'm a baby boy, you're my best friend Greg's dad. You, me, and Gray went on a jet ski group tour, but you and I ditched the tour so we could be alone. Now you're the king of my body, and I am the god of the ocean. I hope Greg's not upset that we totally ditched his fat ass, his tubby ass. But I'm tired of playing these crazy games with your emotions. You are an angel. I fucking love you. Greg's dad, Greg's dad, cool guy, cool guy, sweet man, gentle man, yum 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 yum, soft hair, kind eyes, sweaty back, thick thighs, great lips, fat hips, you fucking angel. We make love in the open water. Start to hum a Peter Gabriel song uh, But we're interrupted by the U.S. Coast Guard <laughs> Who informs us something's wrong <laughs> Greg is dead <laughs> There was an accident Oh my god. And the Coast Guard asked us if we could identify the body. I say that's definitely great, you can tell by his fat ass, <laughs> his tubby ass. And you turn to me and say, Looks like it's down to just us, babe. You goddamn angel.
All right, guys, I'm gonna play six more songs. And we're gonna start the show. Uh, hey, where's everybody from? Here. All right. All right, yeah, so I'm gonna play one more song, then the show is going to start. And it's gonna be a fun, great show. We got awesome guests. And uh, there's gonna be a chance for a lot of comedians to come up and uh, and bomb for about 60 seconds. Um, so that's that'll be fun. This is uh, this is part four of a quintilogy of love songs. This is called Me and Greg's Dad, Part Four. Here we go. <laughs> That hair smells so good, I want to kill myself, I want to kill myself, I want to kill myself. Greg's that hair smells so good, I want to wrap up in a belt around my neck, and then kill myself. Greg's that legs are so long, I want to kill myself, I want to kill myself, I want to kill myself. Greg's that legs are so long, I want to jump into the ocean and die, and then kill myself. I want to hold you like a piece of shit in my hands. I never thought that I could fool around with a married man. You're married in you're married to me. Greg's that feet are so sweet, I want to suck on them. Yum, 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 yum. I want to suck on them feet. Greg's that feet are so sweet, I want to dip them in raspberry vodka and then kill myself. Greg's balls are so weird, I want to study them, I want to study them, cause those are strange balls. Greg's balls are so weird, I want to show them up to all of my friends, and then kill myself. I want to be your greasy baby in the morning. I want to sop up your creamy gravy in the night. You're the king of my heart Till death do his part Hi guys. 
We are streaming live to the hundreds and hundreds of people. This is the only live streaming show at the world famous Comedy Store. Welcome everybody to Kill Tony. Yes, here we are. Getting pretty popular. Over 40 comedians for the, one of the very first times ever. We hit over 40 comedians. Yeah. Signed up for the chance to do one minute tonight uh, in front of us and two amazing guest comedians. We have one and only sponsor, everybody, Elise Lane, sitting right over there, professional chef, chef to the comedy stars. Elise Lane is one hell of a cook. She is a gourmet chef and recipe checker. She makes us a new meal every single week. Tonight she made 18 day dry aged New York strip steak, truffled asparagus, and enoki mushrooms with citrus, basil, gremolata. Wow, that's a tough one. Follow her on Twitter at Elise Lane and Instagram and Facebook at the girl with a pan. Elise Lane, everybody, come on. I know. It's, it's hard to clap for somebody when you don't get to try the food, but Jeez. I hope you ate before this. Guys, Kill Tony, actually, the Death Squad, us, me and Red Band, are hitting the road, everybody. We're going to be in San Francisco on May 12th, in Sacramento on May 13th. But most importantly, Kill Tony, episode 100, April 13th, everybody. That's next month in the main room of the Comedy Store. Episode 100 of the show that you're at right now. Put your hands together for Pat Reagan, everybody. He's sitting right over there. He just played music for you. Pat, are you excited about tonight's show? I'm thrilled about tonight's show, Tony. Couldn't be more excited. Well, I'm happy to have you here. Pat is one of my favorite uh, comedy musicians. He's actually one of my favorite musicians and comedians and one of my favorite comedy musicians. He's all three. And so now he's our new band leader. There's no band, but I'm the band leader. Fuck yeah. I like your style. You're already on fire, Pat. Uh, let's bring up tonight's guests. Two of my favorites, two of the best in the world. I'm so happy when I booked this show absolutely perfectly, and I did it again tonight. Put your hands together for awesome, awesome fucking comedians. Dom Irera and Bob Oshak. Here they come. Dom Irera. Wow. I wouldn't say two of the best. Me and then Bob. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's already throwing it out without even the microphone. He's already I, I, killing without the mic. Dom I, Irera, I, mean, I just don't like being put at the same level as him. I love him, but I mean... <laughs> That's why I'm over here. In fact, I'll keep my space. I don't want to whoa, whoa. paint on, the table join the, join with the... my amateurism. Hi, guys. How are you? You guys good to go? Oh, he's doing the nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the nice guy thing. That's, that's always the best booking of this show, is uh, when I go good cop, bad cop. And Bob is one of the nicest guys in all of comedy. Well, yeah, and I, I mean, this is an opportunity to be kind of constructive, too, with my limited expertise out there in the, in the biz and, one of, and lending some, one of the, the, some of the wisdom. Notorious right? comedy writers, yeah. late, late show, yeah, late right. show, late, late. daily show. Every, You've done well, everything. I don't know. Can't get anything earlier. <laughs> 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 me. Definitely, my material is seen after hours, but you know, uh, it's, it's a paycheck. Every week, I have the band leader ask our guests a question, any random question that he might want to know about uh, two of his favorite comedians. Pat, what do you got for tonight's guest? Okay, I have a question for Dom. Uh -huh. Dom, you're a hundred years old. <laughs> oh my God. Do you have any good stories? <laughs> <laughs> You know what's so weird about it? And this is, and I don't mean to, to be blunt with you. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you work, you will never be as good as me. <laughs> Pretty good story. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I was wearing my Ohio State jacket earlier. And oh, you like that story. Yeah, will you tell that one? That's a great story. About Columbus, Ohio, you were talking about. Is that... uh, I was not always this fat, and my eyes were open. <laughs> and I take this chick up to my room. And I'm giving it the old schluzzy. I was punching her right in the kitchen. <laughs> punching her in the bladder. And we're making out. And she goes, this is so hilarious about show business. We're making out. And she goes, oh, her boyfriend called her. She goes, do you, know, do you, want, to, can you, do you want to meet my boyfriend? He's a big fan of yours. I go, what the fuck? Are you crazy? She goes, no, it doesn't matter. So I go downstairs, and I got lipstick all over me. She's all fine. He goes, man, it's really cool to meet you. I don't know what to say. Hey, it's really nice to fuck your girlfriend. Thank you. <laughs> I thought the story was better back there. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah so did I. Uh, Pat, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's your question? Oh, you <laughs> Pat, what's your question for Bob Oshak? Are you Googling him right now? Yeah, That's what it looks like. <laughs> Uh, no, I got a question. Okay, all right. I wrote. I wrote this down. I came. I came prepared. Mm -hmm. So I hope that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, put yourself in my shoes. You're 14 years old, hung like a princess. You got pubes down to your ankles. Guy walks up to you, says, "Hey, kid, you want to make a million bucks?" You say, "Sure." What's the catch? He says, "You got to put on a bear suit and fuck my wife, silly." You say, "How about you put on the bear suit and I fuck you instead?" He agrees. 20 minutes later, boom, you're a millionaire. <laughs> Uh, is that a question? I think you just answered it. Yeah. Uh, fuck yeah. Let's just listen to Dom's Columbus story. Again. Yeah. I, was, I should have given him the, the bear on that one, right? That was perfect. Uh, guys, let's get into it. You've both been on the show before, so you know what we're doing. We're talking to comedians after they do a minute. Sometimes we give them constructive criticism. Sometimes we just talk to them about what else they could possibly talk about. Sometimes we just make fun of them. Comedians, you know your time is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. There it is. That means wrap it up then. Don't keep going too long, or else you're gonna bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. He sounds extra angry tonight. Is that like the uh, bear you were doing? All right, there's, is a that like bear you're in that story? there's a little something for you guys to complain about on Twitter this week. Uh, fuck yeah, so let's get it started, everybody. Are you ready for Kill Tony 90 something? I lost count. But it doesn't really matter because if they're listening, then they're already listening. Your first comedian tonight, this looks like a new name, so let's see what happens. Art Hernandez, everybody. Woo! Art Hernandez. 60 seconds of Art Hernandez. There he is. What's up, Ellie Room? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, growing up, my father was in prison, so I used to go and visit him a lot. And it was always like fun and exciting because a lot of my friends didn't have armed guards around their parents. So I thought that was always fun. Uh, but the best part about prison was whenever I was leaving, you know, I'd be young and my father would always try and impart some like wisdom on me. And one time he was telling me, he's like, hey man, come here, come here man, come here, don't look at me, come here. Hey man, you're looking a little small, huh? If you ever get locked up, you're definitely getting raped. I was like, oh shit. He's like, you need to start working out. And I was thinking like, I need to start obeying the law. <laughs> so, um, Having all these tattoos, a lot of people ask me like, oh, are you ever gonna regret having all those tattoos? And I tell them no. Because when you have this many tattoos, no matter where you are in the world, anywhere, people give you free weed. <laughs> all right, that's not always true, not everywhere in the world, but everywhere in the world you go, people will follow you in stores. Yeah, it makes for- right. Makes what? Makes for good customer service. I don't know. Dress, I'm confused, you're saying, give it up for him, sure. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, I can tell you guys what to do that. It's it's like in prison. Come on, people. Help them out. Isn't every Art Hernandez's dad in prison? <laughs> <laughs> Tattoos like that. No. So what are you saying with that last one? That you, you dress like that? People follow you into stores? Oh, no, with just this many, having this many tattoos, oh, tattoos, people will follow you around in stores. Why? Why would they I, do They think that? I'm on a shoplift or something. I don't know. Oh, see, so what you're Most saying is, is security guards follow you around in Well, stores. no, not always. It's It might be like a, just a clerk or, or something. Maybe you know? people with tattoos are schizophrenic. Have you it's ever thought about that? It's a, it's a possibility. I mean, a lot of people do get mad about it. You know, when they have the people following their stores. Like, recently I was in Santa Monica. I was at REI. And I just went into meet What's a friend. What's that? I don't know. It's like some... You don't, even, you don't even know what it is? I was meeting a friend there. He was, he was, he was shopping I've been jackets. to REI. Let's be honest, Art. They didn't even let you in the place. Right? right? Yeah. Okay. As soon as I walk in, I have a, like a guy like following me. And I look at him, he would kind of just like start pretending to like clean up shelves and stuff. Right. I just thought it was weird. I don't think it's really about your tattoos as much as it's about your face. That I'm brown. Uh, <laughs> I don't You know, there's not a ton of tattoos here. I mean, yeah, I appreciate but is there a lot hidden beneath the t-shirt? Are, are you, there, going, are you going into these yeah, stores with pants? Yeah. No, I, I, I usually wear pants. Um, yeah, no, just this much is there showing. I do have more, but I rarely walk around shirtless. Okay, because, you know, the arm itself doesn't, uh, you know, I see you, I'm not completely intimidated by just the arm a lot, you know, but, so there's more hidden beneath the shirt. Can I, can I ask to see them, or is that? Wow, look at this. Oh, wow. Josh, I don't, Josh, I don't, Josh, 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 it's, it's not, it's not fair, it's not fair. I shouldn't ask Art to remove his shirt without actually doing Whoa, it. Whoa, look what's going on, wow. Look at that. Wow. Where's the web screen camera? 
so incongruous with, with your body language you actually skipped up here which you skipped a little and you came up with this joyful thing and then my father was in prison and he told me I was so small I was going to get raped and it, it, I, it, I really didn't know that you were going there because you seemed so like happy and, and I, honest to God I felt so bad for you that you grew up like that <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious I, I know I, I'm, I'm like number 79 in Comedy Central's list of all time comedians <laughs> <laughs> I was 143 in 2002's list of the best comics in the Southwest. Ooh. Wait, in the Southwest? <laughs> yeah. That's how, Florida, right? How many, how many, how, how long did this list go for? Was it 143 total? Oh, are you telling me I shouldn't brag about that? <laughs> oh, okay. Is that, is that I, region, I regionally ranked up kind of, okay, this is back. Oh, I see. You're <laughs> launching a website. Anyway, that's, <laughs> this stuff is true, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is true. It is true. And yeah. your father, uh, the only note I had off of the joke itself, which I thought was a, a very funny joke, is uh, your father's voice didn't seem like a, an inmate's voice. Yeah, it seemed almost a little, down. you know what I mean? Like, do your father's voice as you just did it during your set. I was like, hey, come here, man. You know what I mean? That sounds like it's uh, tough. I was an opener by mom. for Willie Nelson. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like it needs to be maybe a little more uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little more timid, a little, a little, a little, a little more uh, funnier, funnier. That would be the key. Dom nailed it on that. One. All right, how long have you done stand up? Um, a year, a little over a year now. Where are you from? I was born and raised in Culver City, but I became a man in Carson City, Nevada. You became a man <laughs> in Carson City, Nevada. So with a prostitute. No, I, well, there was a bunch there in Mountain House, but I okay. moved there when I was 21, and just I like lived there for seven years, and then right back. Right. So I, I think you got stage presence. I think you got something, man. Cool. Thank you, Don. I, I live that, in Culver man. City now. Fuck yeah. 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 One of the things. Uh, <laughs> Culver City. Culver <laughs> City. One of the things that I loved something about your you set did. was uh, about. Uh, <laughs> 41 seconds in when you hit your first punchline on the whole dad thing, you did a physical movement when it happened. Yeah, it was, like, it was almost like you dropped off a bag of groceries or something. Like it was, it was, you skipped forward and then back. Very interesting way of uh, delivering a joke where it looks like you just shot a basketball. Should I keep it up? Yeah. Listen, I, I, I really think you continue mining your life for comedy. If your dad was really in prison yeah. telling you that you were going to get raped if you went to prison. Bob, did you just stuff. do a spell on him with your hands? <laughs> <laughs> Are you throwing water on him or something? I'm emotional when I get that. I really, I really, like, I had nothing to draw from, from my real life, which is why I'm where I'm at 20 years after first stepping on the stage. You had a dad in prison. I mean, for most people, for most uh, uh, professions, that's a horrible, horrible thing. But for stand-up comedy, if you have a dad who was in prison, brother, good for you. You're in the right field, man. Mind that for all it's worth. Can I ask your dad's fate? Where, where is he now? Um, it's actually interesting. He was sentenced to um, two consecutive life sentences because of the third strike law. Okay. And he actually got his third strike while he was out with a woman who wasn't my mom, and she shoplifted makeup. So uh, he was on probation. Wow. That's a violation of parole, which is a uh, what were his, What were his other crimes? Oh. Murder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I never, I've never heard of anybody getting a double white sentence for uh, for two speeding <laughs> tickets <laughs> and <a> exactly. accessory <laughs> to a shoplifting. thing. Yeah. Wow. Literally for because his his side. No, I, I actually want to know. Yeah, let's talk about first two strikes. Yeah, um, I I think. Allegedly, it's come you know, on, it's, it's, dude, it's, dude. Dude. It, it, dude. You're from Culver City. We yeah. already know there's a story. Come on. Yeah. Um, well, allegedly, he stop he saying did, allegedly. He He's guilty. I don't know. Like, He's gonna say I, the perpetrator. I'm, yeah. his, I'm Hispanic, and the way my family brought me up, they don't talk about it. Right. They, do, they, 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 every time I well, see, you my know, were brought, they were like, "What else did man. Hispanic families talk about?" Uh, wearing condoms. Everything, as fast as they possibly can. That's yeah, what they exactly. talk about. <laughs> no, yeah, but, okay, allegedly. <laughs> all right, okay, so allegedly, they say allegedly at one time, what the fuck did he do? How many some, people like, did he kill? There's some, like, like drugs and gang stuff related to it. I don't exactly know. We don't know. need okay. to know anymore. Yeah, exactly. Is he in jail, jail, jail now? Is he in jail now? All right, what are you, his no. attorney? No, um, <laughs> actually, 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 about, about eight months ago, his um, case came across, uh, uh, lawyer's desk because 
lawyers in California have to do like six pro bono cases per year. Okay. And his, my dad's case came across him and he's, uh, he called my sister and said, I can have your father out in a month. And she didn't believe him because he's been out, in, he's been in there for years life. We've been trying to get him out for a long time. Um, and he was true to his word. Like a month later after getting the case, he got it reversed because I guess there, it's a non-violent offense or something. And he's, he's out now? He's 100% out now. And, and you didn't bring him to the show? He has a cleaner record than I do. Oh. Like, they wiped everything because he did 23 years more than he should have for that. Wow. Wait, your dad? Yeah. So he's not serving a double life sentence? No, he was. He served oh. He served 25 years of that life sentence. And now he's out. Yeah, but he, now he I don't just feel this out. bad. Yeah. He's out. Look yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just yeah. like a regular guy now. Does he still only call you once a day? No. <laughs> he, Allegedly. He, Allegedly. One time, he one time called me while I was living in Nevada. I was walking through a Target. I got a phone call from a random number. I answered it. It was my father. He said, hey, there's these things they have that are small phones. Can you bring me some? Can you sneak me some? He asked me to smuggle in phones for him. A long time ago. How many did you fit in your ass? No. <laughs> uh, Art, we just got word that uh, from your dad that he wants you to stop talking about this on a live streaming podcast. Uh, hey, I didn't mention any names. I am a junior, though. Right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Art Hernandez. Oh, no, that was your, your dad just that killed somebody else. Allegedly. Allegedly. Art Hernandez, everybody. <laughs> IDTT Podcast is how you follow him on Twitter. He's at IDTT Podcast. So he's got a podcast, that guy. Uh, the whole thing that he's not in jail anymore bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Ruined the, the whole drama. And the fun. I don't feel bad. Now it's just a fucking act. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love watching you yawn, by the way, during the, the, the stand. This guy here with the glasses. There's nothing, there's nothing more disarming to people performing. And just, you didn't even have the, the courtesy to put your hand over your mouth. <laughs> well, I couldn't sleep weeks, and I went to this Kill Tony show. <laughs> that was out like a light. <laughs> put your hands together for your next comedian, Ron Bush. <laughs> sitting inside of a coffee shop, and uh, you know when you're in your cell phone, you're not really paying attention, you just spit out your order, give me a double shot of espresso with a side of steamed milk. But nothing happened. So I'm starting to get pissed off, you know, kind of like the white man does, you know what I mean, when you give it an order, and nothing happens. So I start looking around, you know what the fuck's going on, right? So I look up, and there's this green cat. He looks like he owns the Lakers. He got the hat, the jersey, the shorts, the shoes, the shoes. I was like, damn. He just looks at me like this. What's up? I'm like, damn. His voice is deeper than mine. So I try and act black. I give him a handshake. But I gave him a handshake from like three weeks ago. He stops me, pat, 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 sprinkle. I get right, you know, I'm like, what is he trying to do? He's trying to show me up, you know? So I'm like, wait a minute. Just give me the goddamn coffee. He goes, you know when somebody wins? Baby, get my man over here a double espresso with a side of steamed milk. <laughs> I got the Barry White voice, not you. He's taking all my cream! Oh. Yeah, all right. Okay, we're just enough of the gun, I think, for the day. We'll retire the gun sound effect. Fuck yeah, Ron. How's it, how's it going, buddy? Going pretty good. All right, so talking to the mic for this one. Right? Yeah. Uh, now let me ask you something. Good. When you say, you know, what nationality was this guy? Uh, Korean. Korean. Yes. And he was. You said that he was dressed like the owner of the Lakers. <laughs> well, he, he, looked, because, he looked like he owned the Lakers because he was with the full outfit. But do you think that the owner of the Lakers wears a Lakers baseball cap, and Lakers jersey, and Lakers shorts? You, you know, I'm, you, there's there's a certain terminology that you know, brother said he was wearing so much gear. He looked like he owned the place, yeah. and so that's what I was kind Speaking of. Speaking of brother terminology, yeah. during that set, there was one point where you looked at me right in my eyes. <laughs> I did, and you looked uncomfortable. You're like he's about. To well, you, you said that the white man <laughs> gets upset when we, they, we don't get their double espresso with steamed milk on the side. Do you think that's a real stereotype that I've never heard of before? You, I never yeah, even had a double yeah, espresso never, with steamed milk. You've never heard of the impatience of the white man? 
Sprinkles, by the way, it's, isn't it called blowing it up? Like, I, like what's sprinkles? Like, I, 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 I'm referencing the cupcake company. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, after seeing you say sprinkles on that, I think every Asian guy is more black than you, Ron. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's why I'm going through the identity crisis. I'm trying to tell you. You know. Right. I like your style. How long have you been on stand up? Uh, this is my sixth month this week, actually. Wow. Yeah. 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 What did you do before stand-up? Um, I've been doing sketch comedy uh, for the I'm a Second City alumni, so I've been doing sketch comedy for the past ten years. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we started pitching some shows and blah blah blah. Anyway, so I, I I've always wanted to do stand-up and I never did. Uh, so I started, you know, breaking down jokes, looking on YouTube, seeing how like Richard Pryor and those guys told jokes I like to tell stories. Right. And uh, here I am. I was I was always worried of coming here because that's my jokes are you know, giving a minute is difficult for me. Yeah, right. that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. It just took a long time. Yeah, it's there was difficult. a I was along for the ride yeah, and I didn't did. know where it was going. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, you you were presenting a very vibrant scene. Yeah, and, and yeah, I didn't have a chance to, I thank you very much. I didn't have a chance to get to the, I did have a chance to get to my switch in the punchline, so uh, I think know. I think you're more of a minute and a half terminology. Yeah. Two and a half, two minute the switch. Yeah, 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 yeah. The switch. I don't the know switch. what the switch quite well, is. You, I refer to that's what I call it. It's like when you you know, I'm leading you down one path and then I and, you know the punchline. Oh the old switch you're Oh they talk about it. I'm trying to tell you guys. That's, uh, Thank that's you it. very much. Right. I'm, I'm learning here, guys. I'm, I'm learning. learning too. Yeah. That's great. That must be a sketch terminology yeah. that I've never heard of and before. And I will never look you in the eyes and call you the white man again. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, you really shouldn't do that to any white man, not me specifically. But, uh, I mean, I guess it's I would mind if you didn't. Yeah. 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 If you want people to laugh, look at what I'm saying. You guys do not have to be threatened by me just because I'm black. Pat, what do you have to say? That's exactly what Cosby said to me last time I saw you should not be drinking with Cosby. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing drinking with Cosby, dude? Are you I, I, I didn't say we were drinking, but I, I think you guys understand that I got the joke part out of that. But anyway, Pat, go ahead. <laughs> When you said the, uh, this your sketch group uh, was pitching some pilots and blah blah blah, uh, does like the blah 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 mean that nothing happened? In any of the it, it means that everybody in Hollywood says, "Oh yeah, I'm pitching shows and I don't give a fuck about that. I'm right here about kill, doing my joke for Kill Tony, and that has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now." I like that we got yeah. similar eyes, though. We do. Yeah. <laughs> and we just had a moment. But he was fucking hypnotizing us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My mom is Jamaican. I can throw, throw that root on you. Easy, easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's an admiral. I, I, all kidding aside, it's an admiral, admirable jump to try to go from sketch to stand-up. I feel like some sketch people actually look down upon stand-ups. Do you ever get that? That, that they kind of no, like, like a jump off a building. Yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> no, they, they, they look, and you're making, you're, you're actually trying to make a transition. Not an easy transition to make. I appreciate that. Thank no, you I do, because I feel like I go to some of these uh, theaters and they look down on the stand up comic. Right. So it's good for you. It's, it's not an easy transition to make. You keep doing it. Keep oh, trying to make that I feel jump. Like, I feel like sketch people sort of have to look down on it because they have to, you know, convince themselves. Like, it's like how a foot doctor probably looks down at a heart surgeon. You know what I mean? Like, well, I mean, you know, they're, they're, whatever. I, my job's more specific or something yeah. like yeah. that. <laughs> you have to rationalize it. Sure, go ahead, Ron, because you are not stopping no matter who's talking right now. So go right ahead. Your head's about to fucking explode. Why don't you just say it, Ron? There's a lot of energy up here. You know, so you yeah. Like, oh. yeah, I know. But, it's like um, there's comedians up here. I was here. actually talking to a friend of mine who, who was like, why would you do stand-up? Yeah. And I told him that, you know, I think that sketch comedy, there's a place to hide. Yeah, you know, definitely. You know, and when you're when you're if you're a comedian, then you get up there. Well, there's a place to hide it. here too, Ron. There's no stand to hide from Ron. If you stand <laughs> right up against that curtain, I'm pretty sure you disappear. <laughs> well, Ron, I had a lot of fun with you. Anything else for Ron, Don no. Irera, anybody? I ended on that. Black joke. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Ron. He paid you back for the white joke. <laughs> no, I think we're we're, we're cheer the fuck up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been this happy in one day in my life than you are on this stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. 
kid that act like he just won the fucking lottery. This is Joe yeah. Tony, are you kidding me? Enemy. Dozens of people are listening via the radio right now. Via uh, the radio. He almost, he almost nailed me until he said radio. He was so close. Give it up for Howard Stern. You tried so hard. You tried to roast the young roaster and you blew it at the end. I, I, I Ron Bush, everybody. There he goes. Dozens of people listening on the radio. For those of you, we're the only show that both streams live on the internet and AM radio. So he's on Twitter at Ron Bush Comedy. <laughs> Oh my god. At the tone, it will be 8.44. Beep, beep, beep. This is a national test of your weather service because we're on the fucking radio right now. Let's keep it going, baby. Your next comedian goes by the name of Davina Joy. Wow. Comedy store employee. Waitress. Very charismatic little witness. We as a species are giving too much credit to celebrity people. You know what I mean? Like, we're pretending they have integrity, but we don't know shit about them. For example, Bill Cosby, as he was just mentioned. We all knew that he was a good guy as Fat Albert. And we all knew Bill Cosby was a good guy as Dr. Huxtable. But we assume Bill Cosby was a good guy as Bill Cosby, right? <laughs> Nobody knew what the fuck he was doing. Like, I saw how he looked at Rudy a couple times, and that shit was a little suspect. <laughs> of all the fucking occupations, as a doctor, he was a gyna-fucking-cologist, you guys. Like, he was not hiding the fact that he's a motherfucking vagina addict. No dude wants to see a baby come out of a pussy, but he's like, I'll look a pussy, I don't give a fuck. 24-7, give me that pussy. Am I right or is it a little crazy? That's my Bill Cosby stuff. I'm gonna stop right there. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank God we're not on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Pussy vagina, stick up pussy. Bill Cosby's with Bill Cosby was a gynecologist. Yeah. Yeah. As a real person? No, it's Dr. Hustle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, pervert. Why do you keep pulling back your sweater? What is that? What are you because, doing? Because, I don't know. He don't want to joke. Davina, I heard you uh, almost slip into a Bill Cosby impression yeah, for a second. You're yeah, like, yeah. you're like, hey, my son, we're looking at a Rudy, and that shit will look a little suspect. I always love hearing it. Everybody's Bill Cosby impression always sounds terrible. It sounds like, I don't think I've ever heard one and gone, wow, that's a real Cosby That was kind of like Adam Sandler Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Davina. Great energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, great Thank energy. You. you came right up, uh, I think, uh, on the stage and just full of full of just charisma and excitement. I don't know how long you've been doing. I know you. All I want to do is molest your body this entire time. I'm thinking about your twelve pack bobo shack. What the fuck? Oh wow! What the fuck? Wow. 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 I didn't even mean to show that. I should have done that for sixty seconds. <laughs> Oh, Bob, that's so crazy that you wear that uh, one ring on your wedding finger because you're not married anymore. I, I can't believe, you know, you still wear it. Shut the fuck up. You were single I can't, now? I can't believe you still wear it since your wife died last week. Do <laughs> you want some lap dance music? Uh, Art Fernandez's dad allegedly. Are, are you now. getting a lap dance at a circus, bro? What, what kind of lap dance music is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? The Cosby Show thing. Oh, that's oh. the Cosby Show thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, so, Davina, I, again, I don't know how long you've been doing this. Um, I've been focused since, like, October 2013. So, like, a year and a half. Year and a half, okay. And do you get up at the comedy store a lot, or is this... Um, here and there, yeah. You are a comedy store employee. Yeah. How's that been treating you? I love it. I mean, right. this is my mecca. I love it. Yeah, you Why do you keep pointing your tits out? Because she loves to I don't pull my tits out. I used to be a stripper. Is. Maybe that's what I think it's just. You have your old stripper like tools that you still use, like having a shirt that has something on one tit, like your peanut butter and jelly pointing it's at it. Peanut butter and jelly. It's, it's like hit the. Hit the that's awesome. Hit the top. It oh, has an geez. adorable fucking shirt. Yeah, but that sub subconsciously, this is all leading to your boobs. Look at my boobs. You know, you got some. Did you like, say you used to be a stripper? Wow, really? The topless, just topless. Wow. In Arizona. It was 
Man. Topless and titless bar, huh? <laughs> Shut up, I'm little, they're there. They're there. Oh, yeah. they're the there. specialty stripper. Hey, do you have anybody with uh, smaller tits? No tits. That's <laughs> very good. To the stage two, let's give it up. Oh, stop it, Brian. Brian, Brian, turn down the music. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Those of you listening to the radio. Great, great uh, stripper name. Huh? Amber Alert. <laughs> <laughs> your style. Uh, do you talk about your stripping days? Does um, that come up at all? Yeah, like sometimes I do. Okay, that's I what don't. you should talk about, yeah. right? You have to have interesting stories for being oh, a yeah. stripper on top of that in yeah. Arizona. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> will Bob her shoes talk about her stripping days? You're so stupid. Wait, what? These I are mean, not six inch stilettos. Oh, each oh, shit. Oh, wow. Those, those, are, those are stripper shoes. They're that's not amazing. stripper shoes. German stripper shoes. shoes, stripper shoes. shoes. They're like, what? I'll bring my stripper shoes next time. Yeah. There you go. I still have them because I want to fuck guys in them. Wow. See, now she's coming alive. Davina, that's this exactly what I want to hear. Just, just being honest like that is yeah. exactly the type of stuff that will work for you. Thank you. That's so. I mean, we can all talk about Bill Cosby. I think we're all in general agreement. The guy's kind of questionable. Right? And, right? Like and, let me, and let me just save you some time. I have the best possible Bill Cosby I know joke, you and do. it's nine Tony minutes Hinch long, class. so the territory's already been peed on. I own it. That's <laughs> right. But Tony's stories about fucking dudes and stripper heels not as good as yours. Are right. Think. So that's what you should focus on right there. Okay. You have to have stories. Oh, no, I do. Oh, I yeah. fart on guys. And you know, and this is this is the right. Oh my stripper. God! Really? Oh, yeah, like we it? fart on people all day, and we wonder if they know. Like, come on! <laughs> you're sitting on your lap, and it's a direct boost, like right to your skin. Like, can you feel that? Ew. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like when a guy's too trying to lick your tits and trying to like bug you, like, God, just don't that. fucking wow. touch me. You just get in front of him, and you're like, I, uh, and you just release one, right? <laughs> in front of people, but if you're annoying me. Did anybody ever, did, it, <laughs> it's around, did any of the customers ever complain about the... Uh, Guys love that you get like an extra $20. Like they're nasty motherfuckers in this world, guys. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> but it's money, so. Wow. It sounds like you were doing really good for yourself before you started stand-up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Until 2008, Tony, I would agree. But the recession fucked with my stripper. The, the recession of what? Your boobs? <laughs> Man, another small boob joke. Hey, you can't tell me you're a stripper and have small boobs and not. Get... You haven't seen my tits outside of anything. They're perfect. What, 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 show us your tits. Show us your tits. Show us your tits. <laughs> what are you saying exactly? That my tits are perfect and it's not about the size, it's about the perfection, and I've got it, so. Yeah. I'm from Africa. Listen, listen to all this. Okay. Teardrop These are, like everybody on this show has so far tried to talk over the host, so I'm going to get rid of you. Davina yeah, Troy, everybody. There she goes. Yeah. Every comedian just keeps on talking. I think they have another great idea. Stick to the 60 seconds, people. Good Answer your fucking Davina. questions. Your next comedian goes by Pat Chanson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. Anybody else here have OCD? Yeah. All right, I counted four people. If we could get two more to get to a multiple of three, that'd be great. <laughs> I do have OCD. It's a psychological disorder. People still don't have a firm grasp on psychological disorders or how to talk to people with them. People will say things to me like, come on, Pat, you know what's all in your head, right? You know what's all in your head. Yeah, it's a psychological disorder. <laughs> That's exactly where it's located. If I ever have a broken leg, I'll come to you to figure out the source of my problem. <laughs> because I have OCD, I do weird things. I recognize that they're weird, but I still can't stop doing them. As a result, people will say things like, well, come on, why don't you just go over it? Why don't you stop? Why don't you just get over it? Nobody ever takes that approach with physical ailments. Nobody's ever like, God, oh, gee, Ted, you sure look down. I know you just had a stroke, but why don't you get over it? 
<laughs> Come on, you at least looked happy on your right side earlier, and I look pissed on both sides. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it for the LCD stuff. I feel like we're at a minute. Now you just hit it exactly a minute. It was he oh, was an absolute CD, man. Wow. That chance, and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. He stopped himself compulsively. Yeah. 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 I, gotta, I gotta stop one, too. I gotta stop one, too. <laughs> Pat, you're funny as hell. Right, I'd, sh I'd shake your hand, but then you'd have to walk. <laughs> How long have you been on stand-up? Uh, about five years. Yeah, where are you from? Nebraska. And that's where you've been doing it? How long have you been in L.A.? Uh, well, I started in Pennsylvania, but I've been in L.A. since January. Jesus, man. Wow. You've gotten really good for being in P.A. in Nebraska that whole time. I did, I did New York a while. Oh, yeah. truth comes out. Yeah. I, I claim Nebraska, though. That's, that's, that's who yeah, I am. You, you, you look Nebraska. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Are you back? Why are you holding back New York, 456, 456? <laughs> I don't know. It's, not, it's I was just there. I'm not, I'm not a New Yorker. I'm just, Put the mic I just in the mic there. stand and leave it in there, because there's a buzz the way that you're holding the mic. The, uh, how long into stand-up did it take before you started talking about the truth? I assume the OCD is truth. It's not a yeah. conceit. It took me a while, because yeah. it was uncomfortable. I, I, it just Hello. wasn't something I felt uh, great addressing. Uh, and then it, I'd say about three years in. Not an easy topic to make funny, but not only made it funny, I mean, quickest to the punch so far we've had tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. Right away Multiple times, and, and it's, the exact, that, and it's the exact seconds. answer to when people say that it's hard to do a minute, I'm more of a thing. Well, do something quick and funny as fast as you can, because that's what this is. And I don't think people realize that, you know, you have to be able to kill in under a minute anyway, if you really want to stand up. Nobody's going to watch anybody with more than a minute long setup before their first laugh, you know what I mean? And instead, you're firing off multiples rapidly, and that's exactly how you do it. So if you do a minute like that, three of those in a row, that's what they call a killer tonight show set or whatever. I mean, back in like, 50 years ago, I meant something. Watch it. Oh, uh, oh are, you, are you on the Tonight Show this week? I'll uh, watch. So, married? I, I am, yeah. Okay. She's actually still back on the East Coast right now. Yeah. She, she literally come out here before her, like about a year and a half before her. She's finishing her PhD. When is to get the stripper back out for you? <laughs> come on out, you mean I'm Yeah, work! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have to release one right then. How much, uh, how much time can you do? Uh, I've, I've headlined. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. So this In guy... places like Nebraska, though. Right. So, I mean, so what, what is that, like uh, 11 or 12 minutes? Uh, I did a show back in, uh, it, was, it was about 40 minutes uh, in Omaha over the holidays. I was going about a block and a half away from Kevin Hart. But we, we sold out the place. But Wait, you, 67 com people. you competed in Omaha, Nebraska <laughs> against Kevin Hart? Yeah. How many, you said you sold it out? Yeah, but it was a tiny place. How, how tiny? I, uh, like 70 like Kevin Hart size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think he beat me on the number of people. Right, right, right. Uh, wow, so that's fun. And you were, you are getting married and you're not no, married No, I am yet. married. You just got married. No, I got married seven years ago. How old are you? 31. Wow. I'd say, ah. Uh, I know you don't want to touch me. Right. Uh, no, go ahead. I got 23. I'm not I got, that bad. I got married at the same age as Yeah? You. Yeah. So you're looking... <laughs> you're 31 as well, right? You're looking, you're looking at the ghost of Christmas future here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat, it's me. Hey. It's you. Yeah. Hey, Pat. Hey, Look where you're going to be. Hey. Right? If I if I can rock, I can't, I can't do abs at 31, so I'm not... Oh, no, no, no. This is the byproduct of uh, lots and lots of unhappiness. Trust me. <laughs> this isn't... No, this isn't... There's, there's a deep, deep psychological reason. I have this. Right. This is my own OCD. Oh, okay. He, he can only do sit-ups when he's crying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that looked like a tear shine on there. Yes. Let me tell you something. But I can sort of relate to the situation, so I think that's cool. So you can talk about marriage. So do you do this because you can't get in at this club, or you haven't tried to get in at this club? Or uh, This is the first time I've been here. I, there's a buddy who I used to do... This is your comedy store debut tonight? Yeah, yeah. Wow, oh, look at that. Look at that. How about that? That's amazing. I'm glad you dug that part of the story. Yeah, this, is a, this is a momentous occasion. Heck yeah. He yeah. went from a 70-person uh, room in uh, Omaha to an 85-person room <laughs> in the Sunset Strip. It's really exciting, Pat. And Kevin Hart's here. Come on out, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> wow. Well, good luck. I, I oh, think 
Do you work clean, by the way? Yeah, I can. So, completely. Uh, no, I don't. He's I, OCD. I do. Of course he works clean. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I don't. I, I, I hate the term work clean because it's. I don't. It's I think that's rejected. fucking great. But I can, I can, I can do clean or not clean. Okay. All right. I personally uh, think that actually makes you stand out more. If right. you can work clean, yeah. or if you can do a set and literally just uh, cherry pick the obscenities out without it affecting the quality of your act, that's something to lean towards. I did a show on a boat for a bilingual church group in Philadelphia once. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got to do my bit about religious doubt, and I, got, I realized you could tell anything you want as long as you preface it with, I just came back to Jesus, this is how I used to feel. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. I got a standing ovation. <laughs> Wow, a standing ovation on a, on a, on a boat? boat in Philadelphia. In two languages, a standing ovation. In two Only half the group understood me because yeah. I don't speak Spanish. But uh, but yeah, they uh, they thought I found God, and suddenly I got a standing ovation for the first time ever. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Now with your OCD, it is. No, mostly just a number thing, or is it other things as well? It's a whole bunch of things. I, I've had it since I was. Probably junior high. You start with like a left foot and like yeah, I go left. I go left right. Yeah, yeah. I have to go left right on everything, whether I'm shaving or you name it. Do you have to touch the doorways when you walk into a different room? If you're no, by yourself. No, I, I've, I've pretty well gotten rid of all that. Uh, some of it is some of it is a little bit just trying to beat it out of yourself a little bit too. But, uh, <laughs> right, so jerking off helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it takes forever to wash it off though. Know. Do you, um, do you have a car? Do I have a car? Yeah. Yeah. Do, uh, would you like a spot Friday at the Death Squad show at the Ice House? Oh, wow. Sure. Oh. There you go. Pat Jansen, everybody. There he is. He's on Twitter at the Pat Jansen. J-A-N-S-S-E-N. And after his first spot ever at the Comedy Store, he's now performing on another show at the Ice House on Friday. Oh, awesome. How cool is that? I know, Red Band. Red Band, yeah. give it back. Give it back to the little I'm just, people. I'm just amazed. The last, you know, a uh, couple times, there's just been so many great comics that just pop out of nowhere that you're just like, holy shit, I want to actually see more of this person. That's, really, that's very cool of you, man. Yeah. If I, have, if I, can, I, I, I can, I don't know that side of you. I think, I think Dom wants to get booked on the show on Friday at uh, the Ice House. Jesus, Josh, you are dropping the ball in the hardest way right now, possibly. <laughs> it's unbelievable. We are together for Josh Martin, everybody. He takes care of everything here. Obviously, there's a lot of disasters. There's five mics, a live stream, crazy comedians. And I think the buzz is gone. That, that should never, ever, ever have existed in the first place. There he goes, at Josh Martin Comedy on Twitter. Josh Martin, everybody. He, he really works his ass off here, and we love him. Great. He is great, right? And, and he's a very funny comedian as well. So uh, if anybody's looking to hire a comedian for anything, not this Friday at the Ice House or anything, but... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Josh. <laughs> Spots taken. Put your hands together for your next comedian. You know what's interesting is I actually started with this guy, and I just saw him recently a few weeks ago for the first time in what turned out to be, because we talked about it earlier, six years. And... Well, we'll talk about it all later. But I started with this guy. He took six years off, and now he's back to stand-up comedy again. Put your hands together for David Bergulis. Okay. Thanks, Tony. So you guys hear about this Mars One mission that they're doing? It's a uh, one-way death trip colonization mission to Mars for 90 volunteers. I think it sounds awesome. Just take all your earthly responsibilities and just flush them straight down the toilet. Like, if you need a guy smoking weed playing Xbox all day on Mars, I'm signing up. <laughs> so I check out the website, and their pitch to get volunteers is all wrong. It's talking about being like Christopher Columbus, remembered for a thousand years, who cares? It should be one simple slogan, not on Mars. <laughs> Think about what that means. So many things for so many people. For me, am I going to have to pay off my student loans that I'm currently drowning in? Not on Mars. <laughs> am I going to have a hard time getting laid? Because there's only 89 other people up there. Not on Mars. <laughs> Am I ever gonna have to heat my studio apartment with an oven again? Not on Mars. <laughs> but there's a downside too, probably. Uh, are there any hot chicks on Mars? Not on Mars. <laughs> Am I ever gonna look out the window and see anything other than a red desert hellscape? Not on Mars. <laughs> Am I gonna have more than 165 days to live? 
not on Mars. But that's cool, because is it considered suicide? Not on Mars. Thanks, everybody. Holy moly, that is amazing. Your Not on Mars is a modern day get her done. And uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm like Larry the Wi Fi guy or something like that. Where does this act work? Not on Earth. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit, that was so funny. <laughs> okay, David Berdulis. Now, we started together, right? And we did it together and like open mics all the time for like two years. Correct. And then you disappeared. Yes. He's got another gig. He's got, yeah. <laughs> oh. That's my car, that's my parking. Phone's ringing right now. Look at you. Oh, your meter's up? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I got 10 minutes, 10 minute buffer. Oh, wow, look at you. Very well prepared. Uh, way to set your timer from the middle of the show. <laughs> you, know where, you know where you don't have to worry about parking? <laughs> Not on Mars. Fuck yeah, you really didn't need to say it on that one. Right, but, uh, you pretty much stopped the laughter with that Not on Mars. Uh, way to really blow that one. Ahead. So David, you quit stand-up comedy two years in. Well, I took an eight-year break. Most people might oh, call that. Oh, an eight-year break? My, oh, six. Six-year. Yeah. There's no real six-year break, right? No, you it's pretty much start quitting. over. Yeah, yeah it's called, you start most over. Most people would call Scratch. it quitting. Right. When they're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you're you, you felt very nerve. I felt your nervousness, and like you said, you, you, you kind of sounded like you were nervous. Like, you sounded like me after having sex, and then I'm like, do you open a lot of water? You're like, 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 <laughs> like I'm trying not to die, you know? Yeah, yeah it, 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 it sounded, it, yeah, it sounded like you just got done masturbating. Yeah. Uh, so, David, um, what made you stop comedy? Um, uh, uh, a general lack of a desire to do anything. Pretty much. I, I guess it would be called depression. Uh, really? Well, actually, that's most people's way of starting stand up comedy. <laughs> I guess you took a different approach. <laughs> so, now, let me ask you this then. What made you start back up? What has it been, a few weeks now or something like that? I mean, that's how often I've seen you here. You yeah. told me that you've signed up for the show three weeks in a row, didn't get up. Yeah, well, it is a little, um, I don't know, it's a, it kind of messes with your head when you're weed dealer asks what you're doing with your life. So I figured I had to do something. And, uh, so you started selling pot. <laughs> well, that too. That too. But, wow, uh, that didn't get the laugh it should have. Uh, so, so how I long just, have you been doing it again? Uh, this is actually the first time I've gotten up since I said I'm coming Have you back. been trying to perform other places, or are you just shooting for this one minute a week gig? No, I've, I mean, I've been signing for the open mic outside, and... Um, Went over to the improv last week, but also didn't get on the list there. So, you should so be doing your, as many open mics as possible because performing. your problem isn't in your writing, it's in the fact that you know you sound like your head's about to explode yeah. at yeah. any given point. There's, there's guaranteed open mics like Haha ha Cafe, you can guarantee you get a spot every single Woo! day. Uh, yeah. Sal's comedy hole when they're doing it almost Hold every on. day. And, what are these again? And through, uh, this, yeah. through the simple repetition of doing these open mics, you're going to lose bad habits like taking the mic directly out of the mic stand and sitting on a stool as fast as you possibly can. And keeping, and keeping the stand in front of you. And, Right. Normal uh, yeah. Right. Which, by the way, which, by the way, uh, Pat Jansen kept the mic stand in front of him too, which is really strange for an obsessive compulsive comedian to yeah, do. Yeah, I noticed that. I guess uh, don't remember that guy from four minutes ago. All right. Uh, <laughs> smart crowd tonight. That's something we say almost every show, also that we don't even want to say anymore, so we don't. But we should have that at the beginning, like comics, please take mic stand and put behind you, <laughs> like at the beginning of the show. Well, I mean. Yeah, it's a lot of comics. There was a lot of. There was a, this, just a, this is a very dramatic moment for him. I mean, as I get it, this is your first time on stage in how many years? Well, six. Six years. Wait, you so haven't done any other that's open what I'm, mic? Yeah. No. Jesus so he hasn't Christ. been up in six fucking years. And so you didn't even end up in that six years. You never went to Mars after all no. that? You talk about it that much? And you were on Earth? Yeah. yeah. Not that I'm, I'm obsessive compulsive, but you got three minutes on the meter. Pat Jansen couldn't control himself. He put money in it for you. Don't worry. <laughs> so David, I, I mean, it seems like you really want to be doing this, but 
I just, uh, I haven't done enough research on where all the open mics are. That's one of the things when I've been coming back here. I haven't really been talking to anybody. You, I could just hear a hardworking, grinding comedian in the back of the room just go, that was Davina farting. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> Every time Bob says a killer joke, he yeah, grabs his yeah. pen and like writes it down. Yeah, yeah, like, like, like it's ever gonna work again. Yeah, yeah. Like that'll work in Fort Blowers. Like that's gonna work Remember on that Ventura County. Right? Like that's gonna work on a bilingual <laughs> ship in Philadelphia. <laughs> so David, uh, what else? I, I just think this is a huge. I mean, uh, this is a major thing you did tonight. So fuck the mic stand. You know what I mean? Right. But sitting on, I'm not a fan of sitting on stools, period. I mean, right. literally, the one comic I think who iconically would sit when he delivered stand-up was pre-rape Cosby. So, <laughs> unless you're putting yourself into that league, to me, Mark Maron but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. seasoned it was seasoned veterans, because there's an authorship to that, but I, was, I don't think you're at right. yet. I was concerned with pacing. It's, it's yeah. fine, I get that. I think you'd rather pace. Pacing because you already back have the forth? energy there. That's what you're talking about, or pacing? I figured if I sat, I wouldn't. It felt artificial. Did. It felt like you were intentionally entrapping yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, if your but... body's telling you to pace, then pace and dial that back. Don't take such an extreme that you're sitting down, because if you're a pacing comedian, I mean, it, Chris Rock doesn't sit on a stool because he's a pacing comedian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He kills as a pacing comedian. And there's other guys that sit on a stool, so you might as well just do what Chris Rock does if that's what your body's telling you to do instead of doing what Bill Cosby does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, distance myself from Cosby. I thought I was already. Go doing more that, Chris but... Rock if that's what your body's telling you to do. Well, all I can say is I've been in your position. I quit doing stand up comedy. I also came back. So, much like uh, Pat earlier, uh, you're looking at the ghost of Christmas future. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I know it's a it's a huge step. So that in and of itself is a victory. Just keep doing it now. You've gotten the uh, the hard part out of the way. Yeah, I gotta Boom. talk to Davina about it. Hit the ground you know. harder. Yeah, hit the ground harder for sure. Pat Reagan, what do you think about David Berdulis? I see you staring at him. You're like eyeballing him up and down, really thinking of something over there. What's going on? Oh, no, I'm just, okay, I noticed you're... Uh, Angela Bowers uh, Livestrong bracelet, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Not, I mean, obviously R.I.P. Angela Bowers, but yet, yeah, like, uh, why are you wearing that? <laughs> really funny, really funny that you said that. I got a little bit chilly earlier and grabbed a jacket out of my car. I put it on and felt something in the pocket. It was two extra Angelo wristbands. We had one of the funniest comedians ever that was like the strongest classmate that I a lot of the people that started around me had was Angela Bowers. And uh, he got killed by a drunk driver a few years ago. So you'll, you'll notice a lot of his friends, we wear this silly thing. We get a new one every year. Some guy makes a, we, I don't know why we do it, but we just do it. I guess it, to keep the memory. Everyone twisted anyway. around my balls right now. But anyway, <laughs> right, exactly. I keep two there. But David uh, was, uh, was talking to me earlier. And at the same time, I found an Angelo thing and I go, hey, you start. You you used to do this with Angelo, right? And he goes, yeah. And I tossed it to him, and then you just roasted him on it. <laughs> <laughs> go pay your fucking tax or your parking. Uh, there you go. Do it. Yeah. David Perdue, yeah. yeah. everybody. Yeah. It's a rough spot for me. And you, it, it's always hard. It's always hard uh, to do comedy when you know your meter's running out. <laughs> it's always a tough position. You know what it was? He wasn't in the moment. You know what I mean? He wa he wasn't really like there. For, he was reciting that set. With, and that's why he was so because he. I'm sure it could have been much funnier. But he, you know, it's like if you're doing Fiddler on the Roof every night, you gotta be there as Tebya, whoever it is. You gotta be there. You, know, you gotta be there in the moment, whatever it is. And Great was, reference. And that's, that's what he's doing. I, I, I think I get exactly what you're saying, and I agree. David Verdula should go try out for Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, yeah, ooh, like the, bu ooh, the buzz is back. Maybe right. Josh can come up here and slam some microphones together and fix it. <laughs> Let's just keep it going. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Scott Duggan. <laughs> Everybody has a fancy title for their job now. Even my dominatrix has a fancy job title. She's like, I'm not a dominatrix, Scott. I'm your dental hygienist. <laughs> Sugarcoat it all you want, lady. 
We both know I'm paying you to stab me in the gums. <laughs> you rate me for having a filthy mouth. <laughs> Disgusting. You like that Macaulay Culkin? <laughs> if I were the guy at ISIS in charge of recruiting young men, I would make it seem way more hip and trendy. And I would start by changing the name from ISIS to Turban Outfitters. <laughs> <laughs> Great, okay, I guess, if, I guess if you just bail out at 43 seconds, it just ends that awkwardly. Uh, okay. All right. Well, the Turban Outfitters thing didn't work for you, but it did work for Zach Galifianakis in his special live from the Purple Onion. Uh, he said it a lot better. Just saying it's not a no. I'm just trying to help the kids that he doesn't repeat jokes that have been heard by three million people. Uh, and what was, the, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, the dental hygienist. And definitely nobody's ever talked about that before, and there's a reason why. Um, all right, too rough on Scott, guys. Scott, where are you from? Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, you should of... put the mic back in the mic stand and then take it out every time. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Just question for question, just pop it out again. Uh, how long have you been on stand-up? Less than a year. Less than a year. Yeah. All right. Do you have anything else to fill the remaining 17 seconds of that minute? Uh, sure, yeah. Do we give them Sure, time? why not? Since, since Should you're we going... give them... Yeah, you sure. Do you have a 17 second joke? Sure. We, we, we don't want to end on that one. Okay. Uh, the other night, my girlfriend told me she wants to get a teacup chihuahua. She said, it's a dog that is this big, it never gets bigger than this, no matter how much it eats. I'm like, awesome. Can I get a teacup girlfriend? <laughs> wow. See, that's a great one. Wow. What, what super famous comedian's joke was that? <laughs> Did you know that was, I mean, had you heard that before? Did you make that up, or did you? Which one? The turban no, outfitters. I, I swear to God. No, I get it. And by the way, by the way, the only reason I know that, just to show you, you know, exactly how it works, the only reason I know that is because I once wrote that for something and found out afterwards that exactly. it had already been done. Yeah. Wait, he, he literally says turban outfitters? I think so, or at least some asshole told me that. Uh, and, uh... <laughs> they, uh Scott, you look like you're dressed in suburban outfitters. <laughs> Whoa, Pat Reagan from Three Point Range. <laughs> wow, man, I knew something was brewing over there. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Scott, do you always chew gum on stage? Uh, well, I'm super nervous. This is my first time here at the store. Uh -huh. And uh, I didn't want to get dry mouth. Wow, that's, that's an interesting, uh, interesting method. You get dry mouth a lot when you're nervous? Yeah. Good answer. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you do for work? I'm um, freelance production assistant. Uh, I used to moonlight at a hotel. Nice, you want to take over the sound for this show? Uh, I'm pretty sure Josh Martin's back there daydreaming. What are you looking at, by the way, Josh? Are you watching the live stream of this right now? Really? Oh my god. <laughs> Don't you, can't you tell, but if, since you're watching the, wh why would you watch that instead of just watching the show? You have a laptop in front of you and you're watching what's right in front of you. Like the only thing blocking you from watching the show is the fact that you're watching the show. <laughs> it's just, everything's backwards I with just, him, but I fucking love him and I can't stop liking Josh Martin for some reason. I just checked Turban Outfitters is a Zach Galifianakis joke. It's also a t-shirt. <laughs> Boom, there you go. Uh, so Throwing that one away. There you go, absolutely. You mean your t-shirt that you have that has it on it. Likeable? Yeah. Can we not agree that he's very... A little bit you know, likeable. He also sort of looks a little unlikable. Like a little bit a little, a little bit like a Lannister, right? I, mean, I can totally see that. He could probably play both roles. Something really McConaughey about him, like sort of like surfboard shirtless, but without the talent. Yeah, without the... What are these O's? We, either, you, either you laugh or you don't say O. We're not playing this game. What was the... Oh! What was the Macaulay Culkin reference to? You think you look like Macaulay Culkin or what? I didn't get that. Yeah, people used to tell me I look like Macaulay Culkin. When you were five, right? <laughs> People used to tell you you look like Macaulay Culkin before everybody forgot who Macaulay Culkin was. I, I looked like him after the heroin. 
People used to tell me that I look like Squints from the Sandlot, but I don't expect people to remember that. <laughs> what are these O's? What are, is this like, did you bring your whole family to watch you debut at the comedy store tonight? Why is the crowd turning on me? I have a massive fan base here. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you I do. think there's a part for you in Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling. What are your, uh, what are your production uh, PA jobs? Great question. Uh, just freelance. The last thing I did was a, a, an equipment prep day for a bar rescue. Um, before Ooh. that, it's mostly like reality TV, commercials. Stuff like no that. good stories coming out of any of that? You don't see oh, no, no, I do have a great story. Um, Here we go. I, I was a production assistant on the Cool Richie's reality show. Okay. And okay. our last day of shooting was at uh, Lionel Richie's mansion. And, and I took a poop in Lionel Richie's house. Yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Wow. Dude, you drop the mic and walk out of here. <laughs> no, don't drop the mic. Yeah, it don't sounds do already Josh will be <laughs> It might fix it, actually. Wow, so you pooped at Lionel Richie's house. Yeah. That's, a, that's a big story. And he saved the poop and then put it in his backpack. Yeah. Brought his backpack to kill Tony. <laughs> <laughs> did 43 seconds of stand-up. He, he, uh, he keeps it in a little Ziploc bag with Lionel Richie's toilet water still in it. Sort of like a goldfish you win at a festival. <laughs> So Scott, like, what, I, I forget, what's Lionel Richie, what, what's his big thing? Oh, not long. Oh, yeah. Hello, is it me you're looking for? I can see you. White guys half-heartedly singing. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, congratulations. You took a lot of hard shots from me tonight, and uh, you... And you also took a dump in Lionel Richie's house? That's right. Yeah. In both of those. There you uh, go. I shit on you like a toilet at Lionel's house. Uh, there you go. Scott, is it Duggan? Dugan. Dugan? Yes, sir. Fuck yeah. There you go. Scott Dugan. There you go. First spot at the comedy store. We're popping cherries here tonight. Dreams are coming true. A lot of people's first times at the comedy Good store. Good luck, Scott. Whatever you decide to do. It's clearly. <laughs> Yeah, it was an honor to have Scott for his first and last time at the comedy yeah. store. So cool. <laughs> All right. Your next comedian, I know this guy. He actually makes a lot of the cool uh, art for Kill Tony, a lot of the cool fan art. He is a uh, rising comedian through the ranks, uh, came from Chicago. Really cool guy. Sometimes he's a little bit too stoned to actually perform when he gets pulled out. But let's see how he does tonight. It's Ian Ellis. <laughs> Oh my god. Pat, I love you, but uh, if you're the new Patriot, your chances of being murdered have gone up exponentially. <laughs> a lot of people sign up for this and want to be the Patriot, and if it's just you, you're probably going to get stabbed, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Maybe he wants to be 99. He's going to get fucking stabbed by a fucking machete. <laughs> That's some black shit. <laughs> I like giving advice to guys going through breakups. Just fucking every guy in this room has written at least one breakup note. They'd rather die than have read out loud. <laughs> Here's how you go through a breakup with your dignity intact. First, you agree with the breakup with a single word, and then you walk the fuck out. So your broad says to you, I don't think it's working out. Stars in the moon, we should see other people, whatever, whatever. You say, cool. <laughs> and you walk the fuck out. <laughs> and what that does is it crushes a woman's soul. <laughs> Sometimes Brian doesn't play the cat and he takes a chance. <laughs> <laughs> it comes across as absolutely confusing. This is one of those moments right then if you're wondering what that organ meant. Are you punching your time my drugs is... or hurting my alcoholism? <laughs> All right, Ian, you, are, you already bombed for a minute tonight. <laughs> I love it. Out of all the comedians that uh, are drinking coffee tonight, you seem the most tired. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I love that uh, you opened up Guns A-Blazing with a 25 second long inside joke uh, between you and Pat Reagan. Uh, you went for it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, you're going to kill Pat Reagan and the evidence of that murder just streamed out live on the internet. <laughs> So, I love that I love that he got such a kick out of him. So imagine, imagine if the audience actually laughed like like you were laughing. How much fun that would have been. Remember, 
<laughs> Remember, Dom, he kills people. Please don't kill Pat Reagan, and if you do, tell Art Hernandez Sr. that we said hello. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that from earlier, everybody? That brilliant callback? You motherfuckers. Anyway. Pay attention. I, I, by the yeah. way, I love your work. Seriously. I used to watch you years ago <laughs> before you quit and became a sister compulsive. Thank you, Dom. I love you. <laughs> oh, really? You're very funny. I mean, what were you thinking? Because I, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was thinking he must be thinking of stuff that's funny. He's just not saying it. <laughs> I was thinking I got 30, I mean, 30 seconds. There's no way I can get through this. And what, do you have in that cup? what do you have in the cup? What's going on? Was it that important to bring it up? Because, I mean, it's bright and silver, it's reflective. Like, you're trying to confuse the audience with your cup so they yeah, don't hear what I mean, you're saying. What is this, like some kind of bad ventriloquist act where you just hold the, the mug and it's supposed to do something? I thought for sure I only had 30 seconds. So I was like, I'll just bullshit the first 20 seconds, 30 seconds. You, 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 you didn't bullshit. You, you issued work. a death threat. <laughs> Do you have a response to this, by the way? Right. No. Hey, you motherfucker. <laughs> you piece of shit. What are you doing? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, he wants to be the goddamn patriot. What are you doing? I think we're. I, I think what we're doing is killing airtime. <laughs> what do you? What do you? What is your? What does this mean? Like this thing that you keep talking about about the the co-host of the show. No, is he the new patriot? I mean, we're just fucking around. We do, you know how we do it here. We we change shit on the fly. What do you mean? Or would you be would you be jealous if he was? You think I that... wouldn't, but I know that that Haiti wants to be ninety nine <laughs> on the on Patriot that. list. He's dying for it. I love him. He's a good guy. You're so talking. Yes, it's to another him. inside reference. Yeah, why are you talking about him? Yeah, a comedian friend of yours named Haiti. Wants to be the Patriot on another episode that's not this one. Yeah, yeah, you this see the fucking African guy. <laughs> okay. He's got a very expensive face. Here we go. I brought him up as the guy that sometimes gets too high to do the show, and I'm pretty sure now you see why. Uh, holy shit, you know, Alice. I've never seen anybody drink wheat coffee before. <laughs> Unbelievable, but uh, we're gonna let you go on this one. I think we've, I think we've, uh, I just saw all of the listeners quit listening because you were up there. So, Ian, you're done for the night. Thank you guys, thank you. check out uh, oh, Kill Jesus. Tony One Shot. There you go, thank you. They know, Ian, they're already watching Kill Tony. Not a lot of people have the balls to give a promo to a show that they're at right now. But, uh, I'm sure Ian Ellis just did that. Follow him on Twitter at Chicago Open Mic. And yeah, check out Kel Tony sometime. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, let's do it again. God only knows what can happen, as you've seen. Put your hands together for Tom Howard. A struggle with alcoholism? I don't drink, it's just a difficult word for me to spell. <laughs> I hate texting. It's nothing like a real conversation. Imagine if texting was like a conversation. Hey Tom, how's your day? Good, Greg, yours. So you doing anything later? <laughs> Come back the next day? Nah. <laughs> I'm gonna call it there. How much time do I got? 17 seconds. That's where I got It's another 43. The thing I'm looking forward to most of my life is when I turn 40 so I can get my prostate exam. That way when the doctor pulls down my trousers, I'll have googly eyes pasted on both my buttholes. <laughs> Hey, should have cut it in 43 seconds, I guess. Uh, fuck yeah, Tom Howard, yeah. everybody. Good job, man. Thank you, style. Really fun. Another, I mean, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, October. Really? Nice. Wow. Jeez Louise, you're funny for that reason. Are you an actor? You perform somewhere else because this? Uh, no, that's just kind of college than stand-up. Man, you just, I guess you're just, you just make it look easy. <laughs> the, the, the second to last joke you did, the one that you were thought you were over with, uh, I liked it, but there needs to be some rewriting to that because it, there just needs to be some things switched, I think. The, the text text sort of? Well, you right. know, the thing is, is that it can have a bigger button. When you say, hey, are you doing anything tonight? The next day, he wouldn't say, nah. 
he would, you would say something else like yeah hey I, man I, just you know, just the, just hey man just saw this now you know or anything I mean there's a thousand different ways you can go I yeah. think because your joke was the next day what are you yes. doing tonight and then you said the next day you're like nah or whatever right. it was so, it, it, so I saw the joke but you just it just need there, you need to rewrite it because there is a punch there it's just how you say it's kind of just lets it fizzle out and, People are like, almost like a math joke, almost. People are like, uh, you know what tag you get out of that joke is you get out of like a dick pic joke there where you just like take your dick out. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I just finished the joke for you. I, I, think, I, think you should lose, I think you should lose the whole text bit and then the rest of the stuff I love. It's just a whole texting bit. Yeah, like I thought of it earlier at work today. Dom's so not a big fan of text messages. I'm kidding. <laughs> Bob, anything for Tom? Uh, no, I thought you were going to be actually a Stephen Wright-like comic when you started out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You did yeah. a very uh, Stephen Wright, sort of a setup punch, kind of uh, abstract, observational type uh, joke. But then you kind of delved into the text thing, which didn't it, it didn't really go anywhere at the end. It sort of yeah. fizzled out there at the end. Do you have more that lend itself towards one type of joke or the other, or is it sort of that mix of the two? It's, it's usually a mix, basically. I just kind of work in whatever comes to my head. Were you influenced at all by the setup punch classics like Stephen Wright or someone like that? I mean, kind of. Like, I thought of the joke when I was pretty high. So, um. It's a shame Ian Ellis couldn't think of jokes. <laughs> I don't think I could hang at all. Right? It would be terrifying to hang. To hang? With Ellis. Sorry. Well, I don't finish sentences. <laughs> it's going to be a problem, comedy. Yeah. So, yeah. fix that. Yeah. yeah. But no, I thought it was a great opener. Very yeah. good opener, and yeah. the second one just one kind of the things I really loved about that opener was that his body was facing us. That was weird. I know. It was, it was like he was, was like, uh, he was at bat. I almost thought that like was his thing, like you know, like hey, see that the comedian that faces to that. the side and looks at the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he was like that a would model. be brilliant, right? He could be that. Nobody guy. does that, right? That could be what he's known Plant for. Plant your feet. You could do more model poses. And then look at the audience and do one more bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think seriously. No, maybe turn all the way around and like look back at it, like back at the audience. <laughs> yeah, like that. Uh, like Nobody that. does that for a solid 20 They do that in West Hollywood, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, we're gonna move along. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Tom is at the real last Mohican on Twitter. Follow him. Ian Ellis is at Chicago Open Mic. Follow him. Uh, guys, this is the part of the show where every week, instead of going to the bucket, we have two regulars, two young ladies that have been writing a brand new minute ever since the start of the show. They are extremely funny. It's always fun to have them and watch them grow and try out new stuff. Probably the only two people I know that actually write a new minute every single week. Uh, and it's always a blast. Bring your hands together for your first comedian of the night, uh, formerly a student at the University of Florida, and after her first time on Kill Tony, she decided to stay here in L.A. and write a new minute every single week and perform it. Here she is again. It's the one and only Kimberly Conn. Talking about Kimberly Conn. Talking about Kimberly Conn. I am from Florida, um, and I noticed something about that. I noticed that uh, people in Florida decided to name their football team specifically after things that hurt Floridians. <laughs> like Miami Hurricanes, Florida Gators, um, Miami Dolphins. And I know what you're thinking, Dolphins, right? But I had a best friend who was raped by Dan Marino. <laughs> uh, I can closely compare myself uh, to the UF football players because uh, I also did three years and then went straight to the pros. Yeah. <laughs> uh, quit college to do stand-up. Um, the end. 55 new seconds from Kimberly Condor. Amazing jokes. I mean, there you are. You're right there talking about where you're from. Stuff personal to you, and I love that. That I love that Miami joke. That's Great joke. Really good. That was um, uncomfortable for me, by the way, because I have a almost exact same joke because you on my dolphin bit, the Dan Marino. The it, exact same joke. Almost, almost pretty close. So it's almost the, the exact the same joke. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's about Dan Marino being a Shit. dolphin. Well, and, you, you know go. my joke. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> 
No, I, I don't. I'm confused. But I know I, 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 I don't. Anyways, I'm sorry. Anyways, but yeah, that's it's, it's it, that was uncomfortable for me because I was just like, wait a second. Have you seen my bit before about dolphins? And damn. There you go. Best joke of the night. Brian had it. And, uh, <laughs> boom! Just when you thought you 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 made it. Oh. I can't believe you did that to her. I'm sorry. I mean, it's my closer, so like, it's kind of weird. Is it really? I mean, yeah. I feel like I've never heard. I've heard you talk about dolphins raping. People, yeah, I've heard you talk about dolphins <laughs> raping people. What's your damn reason for it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me give you my closer right now. I'll just take the 15 minute joke, give me the juice right now. But what do you, what do you make it better if she changed hers to Larry Zonka? I was gonna do the guy that just got the guy with the weird name, the new one. But I couldn't pronounce the name today, so I was like, Tana I'll Hill? say Dan Marino because everybody knows Tana he's a dolphin. Yeah, just right. go with another. You do Larry Zonka, and then it's not almost the exact <laughs> same thing. Uh, fuck yeah. So then, Great joke. I can't, I'm not going to get involved in right. this, uh, no, it's just in weird this subject me, so here. I should have commented on But as somebody <laughs> who <laughs> likes jokes, that was really good. Thank you. Very good. I'm just put it this way. I love your, your joke, the both of you. Yeah. <laughs> you guys work nice. beautifully together. We're good team. Really. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. I love the premise, by the way. I was literally in my head trying to think of more, more universities and their mascots. Nothing. Came to me. But I, I laughed at the premise as a sports fan. Right. And uh, someone who has like you know knowledge of what you were going into. I thought that was a great premise. I don't know if you can explore it even more or expand yeah. the bit. Love that. Love that. Totally. Cool. Thank you. I was trying to figure out how to make uh, the three years straight into the pros. To explain it more about stand up, because I feel like some people don't understand what I mean by that. I didn't understand what you meant. Right, it, that's a, that, that was a very Ian Ellis inside joke move. Uh, <laughs> but you dropped out of college after three years yeah. and then started stand up comedy. Yeah. yeah, that part's probably never going to work. Unless I said it in the beginning of my, in a longer set. Like I dropped out of college three years ago. That's in, only for football, it's not basketball. So that's kind of confusing. Right, because you can drop right out immediately. Dom actually did that. <laughs> All right. hundred years ago. Kim, I think you gotta... <laughs> Pat Reagan. I think, Kim, I think you gotta stop uh, eating lunch with Red Band. Because uh, you guys are you guys are thinking of, thinking of the same things. You guys' minds are fused. Next thing you know, you're gonna be on the same cycle. Stop being a cock blocker. Moon cycle. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, there you go. Another brand new minute from Kimberly Conk. Thank there you. There she goes. She's not there. Your final comedian of the night, the other regular that does a brand new minute every single week. Put your hands together for the very funny stylings of Sarah Weinshank. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's Sarah dismembered or lynched. <laughs> Wrong message, guys. Like, who decided that was a good idea? Guys, give birth to a man. Kind of make it like Wheel of Fortune. And in the end, he's either going to die or he's only going to have a few limbs. And it's like, I don't understand. Like, at least in fucking video games, you're defending yourself against weaponry. And Hangman, you're just making people with half body parts. It's bullshit. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, that's exactly one minute. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't mean to be busting your balls, but I used to end with all right, too. <laughs> Almost the exact same way he said <laughs> Almost exactly. And wearing the same skirt that he usually wears. <laughs> Maybe replace All Right with Larry Zonka. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, what happened? Did you get molested by a hangman when you were a kid? Like, what is this beef you have with hangman? I just was thinking about it, and I was like, you know, tic-tac-toe, that's cool. <laughs> I could fuck with tic-tac-toe. Right. I could, I could fuck with that game where you make those squares. But, like, hangman is a little fucked up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, figure out this word or else this man's gonna die. <laughs> that's that, that's that what sound? was missing. Yeah. yeah. 
you yeah. didn't explore the topic. I felt like you were kind of talking at with right. the topic that you were trying to right there. Like you were circles. kind of figuring it out. Yeah. And there's more of a realization there. The way you just said it. Yeah. That's then true. there was when you came up here. I thought you came up here with a little too strident and convinced of what it was you were saying. I wasn't quite sure what you were saying. Strident. That, you know Bob that loves you when he starts doing this hand thing. That's basically what he's saying. Right? When he starts throwing you imaginary footballs like uh, like Dan Marino used to do, um, uh, uh, then you know he loves you. But you see what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. now I get what you were trying to Yeah, because that was more it. straightforward. It was yeah, like, before yeah. I was like talking around it, yeah. and now I just That like, was a great simple it. way of summarizing a beloved game we all played as children. <laughs> a beloved game. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It also says strident, if you didn't catch that. Strident. <laughs> Stridently <laughs> beloved. <laughs> Vocabulary with bottles. Yeah, so well, that, that's something that I think... Uh, what part of this week did you write Hangman? I've been working on the hangman thing and trying to think about things about it all week. Mm -hmm. I wrote it like a week ago and then I've been trying to add to it and I haven't been able to, so I was like, I'm gonna do it on Kill Tony to see like, how it goes. Right. But like, I've just been writing hangman over and over again, then I wrote Lynch, then I wrote <laughs> Dis <laughs> Dismembered, then I like drew out the thing and I was like, I got nothing but there's something here. And so that's why I'm just working through it. It is true. Like uh, the only thing sadder than a complete hangman is like a half-hung amputee. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sarah Weinshank, everybody, there she goes. She's on Twitter, Princess Shank. There you go. That's Kill Tony. We did it again. Pat Reagan's on Twitter at Patty Reagan. Anything else coming up, Patty? Do you want to promote? Nope. Bob O'Shack is Shack Knife on Twitter. Shack Knife. That's easy enough. Yep. Dom Irera is Dom Irera. Anything else you guys want to promote? Uh. Congratulations on coming up on 100, 100 of these. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. 100 of these things. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you, so much. you guys are a great crowd, too. Thank, Thank you. Woo. Thank you, live audience, for coming out. The Ding Dong Show starts next. John Barris is back from South by Southwest. So stick around for that if you want. Uh, remember, San Fran, Sacramento, middle of May. And Vancouver, 420. That's right. Until Tony 100, April 13th. Thank you, live audience. And good night. Thanks to you, the rap is dazzled. Your music usually dazzled. What a ring for the game, your enthusiasm and passion. Follow your looks, you and your love, that you are. Did I in training, colossal braining, thoughts are entertaining, but docile and impossible to explain it. I'm also baiting, probably find a way to complain about a Picasso painting. You just gotta walk up and sound like Chewbacca